I recently turned 24, which means that I've been an adult for a few years now. I've got a college degree, a full-time job, my own health insurance, and even a 401k. And the biggest thing I learned about being an adult is, it's freaking hard, man. And it's not even the things that sound like complicated adult things either, like filing taxes or picking the right health insurance plan or even buying a house. I don't have enough money for that yet. It's more like remembering which card I'm supposed to give them when I go to the doctor to prove that I have health insurance. Being a Gen Z adult is an interesting experience because even though I'm an adult, I don't always feel like one. I'm so used to older generations referring to us as the new generation that when mail comes with my name on it, I still get surprised. It's like I'm somewhere in between being a dumb kid and unk status. Like when I'm at work where I have coworkers who have kids who are my age and they're all like, "Oh, you remind me of my grandson. And I'm like, haha, thanks. Wait, grandson? But then I come home and hop on Valorant and there's 18 year olds calling me unk and telling me to go file my taxes. Like I'm only 24. Half the time I don't even know what I'm gonna eat tonight. And I spent all my money on weapon skins. You know I haven't eaten a vegetable in three weeks? Plus it's July. I filed my taxes back in April. Now that I'm an adult and have a full-time adult job, one thing nobody really prepared me for is being in a mixed environment. You see, when you're in school, everybody's around the same age. So when you're a freshman in college, seniors seem really mature, but they're really only a couple of years older than you. In real life, there's actual old people, and they've probably been working at your job since before you were born. My supervisor was telling me that this is his 25th year with the company, and that's crazy, because that means he started in my position before my parents even thought about having a kid. So it took everything in my power when he told me that to not be like, damn. I'm the youngest person on my team by like several decades, and all of my coworkers are really nice. But the age gap kind of makes it hard to relate to them at times. Half the time, I don't even know what to talk to them about. So, uh, what was 9-11 like? It also doesn't help that we have very different lifestyles due to being in completely different stages in our lives. Like when we meet on Monday mornings and everyone's like, what did you guys do this weekend? And people are like, oh, my daughter had a soccer game this weekend. My son got his driver's license, so we went to look at cars. Me and my wife celebrated our 30 year anniversary and went to the beach. Oh my God, congratulations. Wow, that's amazing. I don't even like my wife. Then they turn to me and they're like, what about you, Will? What did you do this weekend? And I'm like, the same thing I do every weekend. I slept in until noon and then I played Valorant for six hours. But I usually end up saying something like, oh, you know, I just took it easy, spent time with the fam. <laughs> yeah. But I've been kind of spamming that one a lot lately. So either they think I'm lying or that I just really like hanging out with my family. On the other side of that, sometimes I have to confront the fact that I'm getting older and that people younger than me might not find me relatable either. I was walking my dog at the park one time and this kid who was probably about 13 came up to me and started talking to me. And at some point I mentioned iCarly, you know, the TV show that we all know and love. And this kid looked at me and was like, what's that? And for the first time in my life, I felt old. The kids don't know about iCarly, and I don't really know how to feel about that. There's also the realization that there are people who are younger than you who are more successful, like professional athletes and entertainers making millions, and you find out they were born in like 2003. And for me, it's not really about the money. It's more about the fact that I was told that if I went to college and got a degree, I'd be set up for financial success. But instead, all I got was debt, which is the opposite. It feels like as a society, we're finally arriving at the conclusion that college costs way too much money, but you still can't get a job without it. So even though an 18 year old can't borrow $2,000 to buy a car, it's completely fine to take out 30K to major in art. I don't really envy people who are young and successful though. I think that's a good thing. Besides, I don't even know what I would do with all of that money anyway. Most of mine goes to DoorDash. Another thing about being a Gen Z adult is that we get blamed for a lot of things. Like even for stuff that's not even our fault. You hear it all the time when people are like, this new generation is what's ruining America. But like, how? I've spent the majority of my life in school so far. You guys were the adults. It's like if I walked into your house and got a bit of dirt on the carpet and you're like, oh, you got dirt on my carpet. You're ruining my beautiful home. And it's like, bro, look at this place. Yeah, I might've messed up a little, but it looked like this long before I got here. Like, ah oh man, in 2004, I shouldn't have been wasting my time playing Sonic on my Game Boy. I should have been voting. Look, I've been old enough to vote for president one time and I didn't exactly have the best options. And honestly, they're only getting worse. I'm not saying it's all the older generation's fault the world is the way it is. I'm just saying it definitely wasn't me. 
I will admit though, that Gen Z is responsible for changing a lot of things. The other day I was reading an article that said that because of Gen Z, the Southern accent is dying, which I thought was interesting because I'm from Georgia and I reckon I should be talking like this down over yonder, but really I'm from Atlanta and I grew up on the internet. So I just sound like this type shit. But I honestly can't blame older generations for their lack of faith in us because when it comes to Gen Z, some of us are kind of dumb. Now that roughly half of the generation is of voting age, we're starting to pay attention to politics. The problem is a lot of people get their information from the wrong places. We all know that one person that gets all of their news from Twitter and TikTok conspiracy videos. Bro, the weather has been crazy the past few days. It's been raining like every day. Yeah, it's Bill Gates. What? Oh, you don't know? Bill Gates has a weather machine that he's using to control the climate so that all of the natural food dies and we're forced to buy GMO food. And then they'll use it to control our minds and turn us into zombie slaves. Huh. You, uh, got a source on that? Yeah, bro, it's been all over my For You page. I can't believe you haven't seen it. Yeah, must have missed it. By the way, are you registered to vote by chance? Me? No way, bro. Those elections are rigged anyway. I saw it on Twitter. Okay, good. I mean, I was just curious. But as bad as we are, no one is more gullible online than the older generations. Sometimes I'll be at work and they'll be looking at an AI generated video of a dogfish like, oh my God, James, look what they're doing in Japan. Wow, that is insane. I wonder how they got the dog to do that with the fish. Guys, that's fake. It's AI generated. I mean, are you sure? Like, it looks pretty real. I feel like it could be real. It's not. You know, my brother actually said he saw something like this when he was in Korea. Cap. Yeah, crazy stuff they got going on out there. Can you send me this? I need to email it to him. Speaking of things that are fake, let's talk about dating. A lot of young adults these days think romance is dead. And, uh... Not quite. Like a lot of things, dating has been commodified by the internet. And instead of the old school meeting someone in your community, asking them out and getting to know them over time, we have dating apps that skip all of those steps and sit you down with a complete stranger where you both pretend that this isn't awkward and hope that one of you isn't a murderer. I get the idea of dating apps and I even know some people who are currently in happy committed relationships with people they met on dating apps. I just don't think it's for me. I'm someone who requires the friends to lovers pipeline. However, I'm also a hypocrite because I say I'd like to meet someone in a more traditional way, but I also don't leave my house. E-dating has also become really popular among Gen Z too. And I used to look down upon e-dating and thought it was really cringe. And I still do. But if you found the love of your life in a Discord server, that's wonderful, I guess. Dating as a Gen Z adult is really interesting because despite having so many different ways to connect with one another, Finding a genuine romantic connection with someone seems pretty hard. A lot of times you feel more like an option than a partner to someone and that's a pretty rough feeling. I think deep down we all want someone who chooses us, but at the same time we're so afraid to be the one doing the choosing. To me, dating is like a banana split. Hear me out. Look at this. Who has actually ever eaten a banana split? Like genuinely. Have you ever walked up to the counter and been like, yeah, let me get the banana split. You're a liar. But you know that a banana split exists and that it's probably really good. And you've heard from other people who've had one that it's awesome and you should try it. But you can never find the right moment to have one. Three scoops of ice cream, bananas, and whipped cream is a lot to deal with. And honestly, I can't imagine a scenario where I can justify eating that much ice cream by myself. But maybe one day, when the time is right, you'll get to try a banana split. And I hope it's everything you ever dreamed of. Okay, bro, actually, what am I talking about right now? That, that might actually be the most burger dating analogy I've ever said, like, out of my mouth, bro. Like, am I faded? One thing I will say, though, about being a Gen Z adult is that I genuinely think that no one else before us has had this kind of experience with adulthood. And I know that sounds like the typical Gen Zer thinking they're special, but if you really think about it, the world really is different. Growing up in the digital age alongside computers and video games and social media is a pretty unique experience. You haven't been a Gen Z adult if your parents haven't told you to go walk into a business and ask for a job just for them to tell you to apply online like everyone else. Or having to tweak your resume a million times to avoid getting filtered out by AI recruiting algorithms. 
or opening Twitter and seeing someone getting canceled for something they did when they were 12 or trying to stay up to date on global issues so that you don't seem like a bad person, but you also want to take a break from your phone because you feel like a slave to it. I don't think the world was easier 20 years ago, but I do think that things were a lot less complicated before the internet. Finding your way as an adult is like walking around your room in the dark. Everything is familiar, but you don't really know where you're going. Your parents showed you how it's done, but for you, it just seems so different than before. And on top of it all, we're getting older, all of us, but no one really talks about it. I think that sometimes it's easy to get caught up in the fact that every day feels the same, but when you look back, everything is different. When I was 18, I thought I had the world figured out, but now You're at 24, I feel Trust dumber me. than You're ever. And my mom keeps telling me to go to the doctor, but I'm honestly kind of scared because I'm not 17 and my body isn't made of rubber anymore. They say your brain becomes fully developed when you turn 25, but the world doesn't feel any clearer. And when you wake up, go to work, come home, eat and sleep every single day, you start to wonder what your purpose even is in life. I remember coming home after about three months of working my first full-time job out of college and just wondering, am I really supposed to just do this for the next 40 years of my life? I spent my time in college pushing myself outside of my comfort zone, challenging myself and growing as a person. And now my diploma collects dust on the top shelf of my closet while I sign into a computer every day and talk to no one for eight hours. But you know what? It'll probably be okay. I think that for Gen Z, we live in an unprecedented time with unexpected challenges and circumstances that quite literally nobody could have seen coming. But there are so many positives about living in the era we're in that I believe that in our hands, the world will become a better place. We might have been born too late to explore the world and born too early to explore the stars, but we were all born at the right time to watch Monkey D. Luffy become the Pirate King. Could you imagine being 24 or 100 years ago? No Spotify, no Twitter, no YouTube while I eat? I wouldn't have lasted a day. Sometimes I wish I could go back in time just so I could go up to a Victorian child and put him on as some Playboy Cardi. People from 100 years ago will never know the pain of match MVPing in your rank game just to lose because your teammates suck. The modern era comes with modern challenges, but I think that if anyone is equipped to handle the big questions in this life, like climate change or world hunger, or when is she gonna text me back, it's us, Gen Z. Thanks for watching the video. Also follow me on Twitter. Peace.